Hi, good morning. Um, today is 9-11. Um, well, first of all, I would like to, uh, it's, it's a hard day. Um, I remember when I, when that happened, I was in high school in Mexico and even though it was happening so far away, um, you know, it, it, it was still shocking. And I remember that my dad is a firefighter and he, you know, he lived in Connecticut and I was like so scared and afraid that, you know, he might go to New York and God forbid something happened to him. You know, days like today reminds us that life is very, very short. Yeah. On another note, um, don't mind my super heavy makeup. I, I have a wedding next month and I, you know, I was trying my makeup and whatnot. I don't think I'm like that happy with it. I mean, I'm not the best at makeup, but yeah. So anyway, today it's a, an important day because, well, I don't know if I ever said this, but I have a son. He's an only child. He has special needs. Um, he has autism and ADHD. I have ADHD as well, so that runs in the family. Uh, but yeah, so he has autism on top of the ADHD. And we, well, I took him out of school, public school, after third grade. He was having a very hard time with, um, with bullies and the school wasn't helping and it got to a point that I said, you know what, I, I rather do it myself and keep him safe than continue with this situation. And what I mean by keeping safe is that he got punched, he got kicked, he got, somebody bit him. Um, he, like people would say the worst things, like one, a nine year old told him, um, your mother made a mistake by giving birth to you. And honestly, as much as I was mad at the kid for saying that, it got to a point that I felt sorry for him. I felt bad because a regular nine-year-old does not come up with that phrase on his own. So I felt bad because that meant, excuse me for just one second, I need to get a hair tie. Ah. Okay. I need to get a hair tie. Um, so that means that somebody said that to this kid. And, you know, shortly after I, um, I read that their pa his parents were having a divorce, which is really sad, you know, um, so anyway, so we homeschooled the last four years, so four through seven. And, you know, it was great because he would get, he was getting individualized um, attention and curriculum and, you know, every, everything and anything that he needed, he would get it. You know, we had, um, we have a community of homeschooling families here and we would get together um, every other week for our homeschool hangout at the library and then um, once a month we would get together for to celebrate you know whoever's birthday was and whatever holidays there was so for an example in March they will celebrate my birthday and St. Patrick's Day. So we would have like a St. Patrick's birthday and November would be Thanksgiving and April would be Easter and stuff like that. And it was, you know, it, it, it was great. Like I actually, um, when my son, when we decided to bring my son back to public school, I was calling, you know, one of the moms there. I said, you know, I'm really going to miss Sorry, I'm I'm like covering my face with it, trying to do this braid. I'm so sorry. You know, trying to get um hold on, let me take this off for a second. 
you know, I was saying, you know, I'm going to miss all of you guys. And she's like, oh, well, you know, even though your son is not, you know, not um, available, you can come. <laughs> and I was like, well, maybe I will, you know, because first of all, it's very hard as a mom to make friends. It is very hard. So when you get thrown, you know, a bone, <laughs> you you grab it. So anyway. So, yeah, so we were having a great time. You know, we found a curriculum that, you know, we loved. And it, it was like super, it was, it's literally called Easy Peasy Only One Homeschool. And for anyone that wants to homeschool that does not have an idea, because let me get, let me tell you, I had no clue what I was doing. But I, the first year was a little rough. But that curriculum and the help of uh, another one of my friends that homeschools their, uh, her five kids, it was amazing. Like, I was so happy because, like I said, it was great for my son. With that said, um, the idea was that we were going to put my son back. And when I mean we, I mean my, my husband and I. Um, we were going to put him back into public school for high school. However, my husband was really adamant that, you know, it's, it's eighth grade and he's going to miss the graduation and he's going to miss this and like all the social aspects of, you know, of eighth grade and blah, blah, blah. So. That sounded horrible, but like the blah, 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 but you know what I mean. So anyway, with that said, I said, fine, we put him back into um, public school. <laughs> I had to go and get, you know, certain accommodations for him to help him succeed. They are not crutches. And a lot of people are like, oh, you know, he should, you know, he should um, deal with it. And blah. it's, see, it's not that I don't want him, that I want to make his life easy. It's just that kids with autism and dyslexia and stuff like, like they start way back on the race. Just imagine that literally uh, uh, they're running and everybody starts at the start line at the start um the start line but then you have kids that have some sort of that that are neurodivergent or some sort of disability or whatever and they start about a mile back so these accommodations are to cover that mile so that they can be on, they can start at the starting line. Um, that's it, the, like how I, I can, you know, think about it. Um, so anyway, so I went in and I asked for certain accommodations and, you know, they were like, oh, well, yes to this, yes to that, but uh, no to this and no to that, okay. So one of the things that I asked that they said no was that my family in general, we have physical reactions to stress. So for an example, when I travel, I, when I travel, sorry, I would get a fever like the day before or I will get like a bad stomach ache or a migraine or something like that. And it's not because I'm afraid of traveling. I love traveling, but because I get nervous of, you know, like, oh, we gotta be there in time and, you know, we gotta do this and we gotta do that. So it's, it's really nerve wracking to me. And also, you know, as a parent with a child with special needs, it's like, is he going to be okay? Is he going to have a meltdown? Is he going to get overstimulated? You know, like you have to remember, oh, I got to bring his headphones and I got to make sure that I bring enough 
um, things to do for him and whatnot. My son is the same way. When he was getting bullied, he, just give me. When he was getting bullied, he would have physical reactions to it. So, like, if he would get punched one day, the next day he would have to stay home because he was spiking a fever. And I'm not talking like a, a hundred, no, no, no. I'm talking like one of three, one of four fevers. And that is very concerning. So, I talked to the school and I said, look. And another thing is that ever since my son was born he has had issues with his stomach that is something very common for kids in the autism spectrum that they will have a uh, uh, gastrointestinal problems so i told the school hey can you please like do not restrict his bathroom pass like if he needs to go seven times allow him to do it he's not going to the bathroom to play with his phone he's not like, I guarantee you that he's going because he needs it. And the school said, well, um, we would need a doctor's note for that. Okay. I also told them, I am afraid. They give them three, three minutes between classes. And they have to go to the locker, get their stuff because they don't allow them to bring their backpacks they have to leave their backpacks at the locker they have to leave their phones at the locker so I told the teachers I need him to carry his backpack so that he doesn't have to go to the locker every five minutes that way he can use his three minutes in case he needs to go to the bathroom or to actually get to the other classroom without running Here's why. His main subjects, his core subjects, are within a hallway. But then you have art, you have music, and you have PE. So PE is three, three floors up. No, two floors. And then art is three floors up, and music is one down. My son is clumsy. He takes it out of me. He takes it. So I'm afraid that he's going to be carrying his binders and his uh, pencil case and this and that. And he's going to try to get to the class super quick because, again, they only give him three minutes. And he's going to trip and fall. And because he has his stuff with him, he's not going to be able to hold it to um, stop himself. So I asked for that accommodation. They're like, well, you know, that would need a doctor's note. Okay. So I asked for certain accommodations and they said that they could only have it with a doctor's note. So I called my son's doctor. I sent him a letter. I said, look, this is what I need from the school. And they are not given to me because they said they need a doctor's note. So the doctor said, I got you. Don't worry. So he read through the uh, accommodations. There was a couple that said, hey, Pam, I don't think that this is needed. And I said, okay. And he sent me a letter. I just delivered them that letter um, today because I got uh, his, my, my son's doctor uh, emailed it to me last night. And right now it's 9.19 in the morning and I have the meeting at 9.45. Oh, wait, I forgot to tell you. So I told the, doc, the, the school about this and they're like, oh, he needs a doctor's own. Okay. The second, second day, like literally one, two, the second day they call me and they're like, oh, Logan needed a change of clothes because he had, uh, he, I guess he didn't make it to the bathroom or something like that, <clears throat> but he did make it. It's just that they thought he didn't, but he did make it. But it's funny because they were calling me at the second day of school and I was like, you know, I told you so. Um, so now I, just in case I send him a, um, change of clothes the next day, but, um, also I had asked for them to give him an IEP, an individual education plan, and they gave him a 504, which is, they give them certain, um, accommodations, but it's not, he's not falling under the special 
education part. And the reason that they didn't want to do it is because they have to pay for the assessment. I told them he needs an IEP. No, no, no. The 504 will do. I said, okay, I uh, will can try it and see where we go from there. Um, within like that day, they call me and they're like, oh, we want to schedule a PPT meeting to talk about getting him assessed again. Again, I told you so. So anyway, um, we had to meet the teachers the other day. Um, and, you know, all his teachers are very lovely. But there was a couple of teachers that said, you know, he seems very overwhelmed. You know, he's very afraid that he's not he, that he's going to have a tardy and he's going to get in trouble. And he's afraid that, you know, if he doesn't um, finish his homework, then, you know, he's going to get in trouble. So it's a lot of pressure that my son has at the moment. And he has his therapist and, you know, they're working about, you know, stress management and, you know, all that um, coping mechanisms and stuff like that. He also talks to the school psychologist. Um, I think it's once every other week. So he's being supported. However, he does get very overwhelmed very easily. Um, and I don't know how to help him because as much as I want to say, hey, you know, do this, do that. I, I understand that he has to figure it out. So, yeah. So anyway, in about 20 minutes, I'm going to go and have the PPT meeting with the team uh, and that is going to do the assessment. Sorry, I, I stumble on my words because, again, ADHD. Um, and yeah, I mean, hopefully it will be a good day. Hopefully they will listen to me. Um, I sent in writing all the stuff that, you know, the doctor said, yes, you need this. Yes, you need that. Um, I don't know. Again, this is why I get nervous because having a child with special needs is hard. On top of that, if he's going through the teenager years, it's even harder because everything is like, oh, mom, oh, mom. Like, Logan, do your chores. Oh, fine. You know, it's... It is very, very frustrating. And now that I have a teenager, I, I remember when my, how my mom was. And now I remember when she was, like, going crazy sometimes with me and my sister. So, um, yeah. So, for the most part... I'm just waiting for the school to call and, you know, get that done. Hopefully, that will give him the accommodations that he needs. Um, yeah. It's hard. This whole situation is very hard. I mean, not only for, especially for Logan, that's my son, but, you know, for, for the school too, because... It's hard when you have a lot of neurodivergent kids and they need certain accommodations, but then you, like, I am very, very aware that my son is not the only one. So let's say you have a class of 25, probably like six to 10 of them might be neurodivergent. And so you're trying to teach a class while still be, like, you still have to know every special need so that you can, it sounds bad to say cater to it, but so that you can give the tools to the kids. And that's another thing. There's a lot of kids that don't know what tools are at their disposal. So if you ever have to do a 504 or an IEP, um, not only do you ask for everything to be in writing, like if somebody says, oh yeah, we're already doing that, don't be like, oh, okay, no, no, no. Say, well, since you're already doing that, there won't be a problem putting it in writing. They have to do it if you request it. Um, because if if they say, oh, yeah, we're doing that, and all of a sudden they stop doing that, then 
you can't fight for them to add it to the IEP or the 504 then. Um, and so it's, like I said, oh my God, I, I just lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? Oh, the teachers, yes. So with um, kids and teachers need to be trained about a specific IEP or 504. So for an example, in my case, or my son's case, let's say that he has um, 10 things that, like extra time testing and unrestricted bathroom use and, you know, movement breaks and da, 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 da. So once it's in writing, the teachers need to be notified. Hey, you have a kid that is a neurodivergent and these are his accommodations. On the same token, the school technically has to do this, but I've been doing it. I've done it before. I go to my son and say, "Hey, these are your accommodations. You can only use them in these cases. And you, if you abuse them, they're gonna go away, and it's gonna be harder for you. So there needs to be a training on how and when to use an accommodation. Um. So yeah." Oh my god. Yeah, I don't like the way that my makeup came off. I mean, like, this part I like, but like, I don't like the thing. Maybe I can soften it up with a fluffy brush. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try that to soften it up. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's today's, <laughs> today's um, report. Um, today is a cleaning day. I finally was able to open the windows because, you know, we've been around the AC because it's been muggy and hot and horrible. Um, but finally, you know, it's raining, but I can keep the windows open, which is great. Um, I mean, if you're still watching me, thank you. Um, you know, there's not some, there's not like a specific theme that I'm going to be um covering unless you guys want to leave me a message um say hey i would love to talk more about this or that um so you know it depends on the day like some days i'll talk about polymyositis another day is about fibromyalgia another day is about ra another day is about autism adhd um you know stuff like that which is pretty much my life um it's it's not that in interesting, <laughs> but I would love for you guys to stick around and watch me. Um, I don't post on the weekends because those are family days. I try to post, I'm going to try to post every single day. Uh, there might be some days that I don't post because I'm not feeling good or um, life got in the way, but I will try to post every single day just so that you guys can get to know me a little bit better. Um, if anyone wants to throw me a subject, I'll research it and get back to you. Otherwise, that's about it. Um, thank you for watching. I hope that you have a great day. I hope that you have very good health and fortune and happiness and love and that you find $20 on the street. <laughs> I hope that you find at least five bucks on the street and that you can get yourself a drink or a coffee or, you know, something. Anyway, see you later. Bye.